everybody, I'm Ariel Tron with the Anacostia Watershed Society and today I'm going to tell you all about wetlands. Come on aboard! be wondering what exactly is a wetland? Well, it's just what it sounds like. It's wetland. I'm standing in a wetland right now and you can see it's the area where the land meets the water and there's lots of aquatic plants growing. Not only is it a beautiful and peaceful place, but it also provides lots of ecosystem services. The first really important thing to know about wetlands is that they provide food and habitat for all kinds of animals. Lots of animals eat the seeds from wetland plants and lots of other animals live in the dense vegetation that you often find in wetlands. Because there's so much dense vegetation, the animals are able to hide from their predators in the wetlands. Wetlands are especially good for young animals because, again, they can hide from their predators. So wetlands are even sometimes called the nursery of the river. Another really cool thing about wetlands is that they act as a natural filter. Now when I say filter, we all probably picture something that looks like this. Maybe you've seen this in someone's refrigerator before. And why do people have this? To help clean the water, getting out all of the things that we don't want in the water. And that is what wetlands do for our rivers, is they act as a natural filter, helping a lot of that sediment or dirt that washes into the river settle to the ground, and also absorbing some of the pollution that comes in the water. What do I mean by that? Let me show you a demonstration to help you understand. Here you can see that I took some celery and I put it in a jar and I added some blue food coloring into the water. So the food coloring started in the water and then I set the celery into the jar a few days ago. And now you can see what happened to that food coloring. Well, it started out in the water, but the plant, the celery, was able to absorb what was in the water and now it's in the plant. So the blue food coloring started only in the water and now it's in the plant. So that same process happens in the wetlands. Those wetland plants that are out there, their roots are down in the water and they can help to absorb some of that pollution that comes into the water when it rains that gets washed in and they can help to filter it out and break it down. So the plants act as a natural filter and there are some other helpers out there that we can't see which are called microbes. They're tiny little organisms that are down in the soil. And they also help to break down the pollution. Not only are wetlands really good at absorbing the pollution that washes in, but they're also just really good at absorbing water. They act like a giant sponge. So when we have a rainstorm and water rushes in, washing off of our roads and our parking lots and our buildings coming into the river, if we have wetlands along the river, they act like a giant sponge soaking up a lot of that water so that we don't have flooding throughout the city. Now that we've talked about the importance of wetlands, let's dig a little deeper and learn about some of these plants that live in the wetlands. Right here, I'm standing next to one of the tallest wetland plants we have in our watershed, which is called wild rice. Wild rice is a really important plant because it grows really tall. You can see it, it's taller than me. It can grow to be up to 10 feet tall. So that means it also has really deep roots that go deep down into the soil, helping hold that soil together, helping absorb lots of water, filtering out some of those pollutants. Wild rice is also really important because you can see on the top of the plants, it produces all of these seeds, those wild rice seeds. And those seeds are a really important food source for a lot of animals, especially a lot of different kinds of birds. 
a lot of birds, when they're getting ready to migrate, fly south for the winter, they will eat these wild rice seeds, and they're a really nutritious thing for them to eat. It gives them a lot of energy before they make that big trip. Another cool wetland plant is this one right here, which is called arrow arum. It's called arrow arum because the leaf looks like an arrow. Now this plant doesn't get as tall as the wild rice, but what it does is it gets these big, wide, dense leaves and creates a nice canopy over the wetlands that provides really great habitat for all that wildlife we've talked about. Those fish, turtles, ducks, all kinds of stuff that lives in the wetland, the arrow arum helps provide them with a lot of that great habitat. Some people even call arrow arum duck corn because the seeds look like little corn kernels and ducks will come along and peck at the seed pod and eat the seeds. When you're out in the wetlands, the way the seed pod looks is it looks like this. It hangs down off the plant, looks kind of like a little lemon. And then what happens is it falls down into the mud starts to break down or decompose. Sometimes a duck will come over and peck at it, open up the seed pod. It might eat some of those seeds. And some of those seeds that don't get eaten, now they're exposed, they're out laying on the mud, and they're going to germinate or start growing right there in the mud and help create even more wetlands, another new arrow arum plant. For hundreds of years, there were lots and lots of wetlands along the Anacostia River. Over 2,000 acres of wetlands that were providing food and habitat for wildlife, filtering the water and keeping the river nice and clean. Unfortunately, a lot of those wetlands were filled in by humans as people wanted to have more firm ground to build more city on. And also people were afraid that there were mosquitoes living in the wetlands that might spread diseases like malaria. So a lot of those wetlands were filled in. We lost a lot of those original wetlands. Now that we understand the importance of wetlands and how many ecosystem services they provide, we spend a lot of our time restoring those wetlands, helping to bring them back. How do we do that? Well, it starts right here where we grow new wetland plants from seed. So we collect the seeds and then what we do is we plant them in these flats or these trays. So we fill this up with a mixture of sand and soil and then we plant the seeds. And some of that happens here at our wetland plant nursery and some of that happens in schools, in classrooms with students who are participating in our rice rangers program where they grow these wetland plants under lights in their classroom and they get to observe them, watch them grow and then they bring them out to get them transplanted into the river. So again, we start them from seed and then they grow. And once they have grown, you can see this is one that has been growing for about a year in this flat here. And you can see that it's grown into uh, a nice established plant. And so then what we do is we take it out of the flat you can see it's got a nice established root structure that will be able to hold it up nice and strong out in the wetland. And so we will take this out and transplant it along the Anacostia River. So after we have had the plants in the wet beds for a while and given them a chance to grow and get established and get a nice root structure, then we bring them out here to the wetlands and we transplant them into the mud flats. So what we're trying to do is expand the amount of wetlands that we have. So we wanna have more wetlands and we wanna have all kinds of different species. So we have a lot of biodiversity out in the wetlands. So what we do is we're gonna take our plant, we've taken it out of the flat where it was growing. We're gonna loosen up the roots so that they remember that they wanna grow down and then we're gonna dig a hole right here in the mud. So it's low tide right now. That's how we're able to be standing out in the water. In a little while, the water will come up and then the plant will be underwater. So we're out in the tidal wetlands. So we have our plant. We're gonna take our shovel. We're gonna dig a hole that's as big as the root ball. So I'm gonna set my plant down. I'm gonna, I'm going to dig a hole that's nice and deep 
so that there's plenty of space for that root ball and for all those roots to grow down in the mud. And remember those roots, they're gonna help hold this sediment in place and they're also gonna act as that natural filter. So we're gonna take our plant, roots and all, we're gonna get it situated right there in the hole. We're gonna make sure that the green part is coming out, of course, and then we're gonna take that mud and we're gonna place it back around the base of the plant so that it's nice and secure so that when the tide comes in, it won't get washed away when the tide goes back out. So we wanna make sure that it's really secure, that we've patted the mud down, and now our plant is all set. And again, this is an aero arum plant. It's gonna grow to have nice big leaves, nice vegetation that'll provide really nice habitat and shade for lots of wildlife. Now that we know how awesome wetlands are, you might be wondering where you can go visit some of these wetlands. We're lucky here in the Anacostia watershed in that we can access a lot of wetlands right from the Anacostia Riverwalk Trail. You could come out here to Kenilworth Aquatic Gardens. You could also go to Kingman and Heritage Islands. Or in Maryland, you could go to the wetlands just south of Bladensburg Waterfront Park. Even when you're not at the wetlands, you can still make sure you're doing your part to help ensure that we have healthy, thriving wetlands along the Anacostia River. How can you do that? You could come out and join us at a volunteer planting day. You could join us at a volunteer trash cleanup to make sure we don't have trash that's ending up in our waterways. You can also make responsible decisions in your everyday life. You could use a reusable water bottle so we don't have water bottles ending up in our wetlands. You could use a reusable grocery bag so we don't get plastic bags ending up in our wetlands. So let's make sure we all do our part so we can have healthy, thriving wetlands that can act as natural filters and help us to make sure that the Anacostia River gets clean.